Hey guys, this is Emily with Snake Discovery, and today we'll be discussing one of many controversial subjects in the reptile community. We'll be going over the pros and cons of each side, and then discussing what we have found to work best with our own animals. This is one of those subjects that a lot of reptile keepers and breeders have strong opinions about, and as a result, we will be keeping an eye on the comments section below. Uh, constructive comments are more than welcome. However, if things kind of get out of hand, basically harassment will not be tolerated, so those comments will be removed, and if it gets too bad, we will have to disable comments for this video. So please remember to play nice in the comments section below. Anyway, I hope this video helps you out when it comes to taking care of your own reptiles, and enjoy! Today we'll be talking about whether it's best to get a wild-caught reptile or a captive-bred reptile. But first, these are just two of our 20 plus hognose snakes. These are two females. This is a condomorph who is the mother of our most recent clutch of babies, and this is a twin spot albino morph, which will hopefully be big enough to breed this year. I'm really looking forward to getting some of her babies. First, let's start with captive bred animals. These, you, t you know their lineage because the breeder has the parents, so you typically get a better idea of what their temperaments are going to be like as they age or what their colors will be like as they grow up. Captive bred animals are, as the name implies, used to living in captivity and therefore are typically better eaters, especially when it comes to frozen thawed prey, and they're usually better at being handled because they're used to human interaction. Captive bred animals are also usually healthier than wild caught specimens, and they are more likely to resist infections, and they have fewer parasites, if any at all, compared to wild caught animals. Next, captive bred animals are specifically bred to be kept as pets, whereas animals from the wild are meant to be in the wild. And you don't remove them from the wild in order to keep them as a pet, so you're not hurting the wild native populations if you buy a captive bred baby. One of the drawbacks to captive bred animals is that they are sometimes more expensive than wild caught, because there's more efforts that go into feeding their parents and brewmating the parents if needed and incubating the eggs or they're taking care of the young, but if that species has been bred in captivity long enough, there's usually so many of them available that they are not more expensive than wild caught. Finally, if you're trying to acquire a more rare species of animal, getting one that's captive bred is going to be a little bit harder than getting one that is wild caught. A lot of the animals that are still taken from the wild today are those that are either harder to breed in captivity or there's just not many breeders of them out there or people are trying to discover a new morph that hasn't been found yet because a lot of today's morphs, especially in like ball pythons, were first discovered from a wild caught animal straight from Africa. And then that animal was selectively bred so that that mutation is now readily available in the pet trade. However, there are a lot of drawbacks to wild-caught animals, as you can probably imagine. First off, they are usually covered in parasites, both internal and external, so as a result they need a very extensive quarantine period and treatment period to take care of all those parasites. They also don't have the immunities that their captive-bred counterparts do have, so they may be more likely to catch something after they've been imported into captivity. Although a wild-caught animal may be cheaper initially, after the vet bills that may be required and parasite treatments, they may end up being more expensive in the long run for an animal that isn't as healthy as a captive-bred animal is to begin with. Since wild-caught animals are not used to human interaction, this usually results in them being less tame or more aggressive to humans. So if you want an animal that's going to be friendlier, like these two hognose snakes right here that are not playing dead out of fear, then I would recommend going the captive bred route. Along with being more aggressive, a wild caught animal may also be a worse feeder than a captive bred animal. Take for example a ball python that's used to catching and eating live prey in the wild that's then moved to captivity and expected to eat frozen thawed prey, it's going to take a lot of time and effort in order to transition that snake to the frozen thawed food, if it ever does. There's also the legality portion of wild-caught animals. There's a lot of permits that are required in order to take animals from the wild, not in all places around the world, but for many because they're trying to conserve and keep track of native populations. But a lot of poachers, I mean, poachers don't grab those permits, of course, that's why they're called poachers. And there's a lot of people who just don't understand that they need to have a permit, so they accidentally take them from the wild without the proper paperwork. All of this behind-the-scenes collecting of wild reptiles decimates their populations in the wild because usually the animals that are taken from the wild are breeding-sized adults. So without those adults, 
the native populations have to wait until the younger reptiles grow up and then hopefully get a chance to breed before being captured themselves. It's just a vicious cycle and because of this, there are a lot of species in the wild that are starting to become threatened due to over harvesting. Now, one example of this would be the ornate box turtle in North America. They're being over harvested for the pet trade and even though it's illegal, people still do it. This is causing decreased numbers in the wild, which has resulted in them being put on the endangered species list, at least in the Midwest. Wild caught animals are also usually pretty stressed, which may uh, weaken their immune systems, making them catch diseases easier than captive bred animals. The reason why they're stressed is because these animals are taken from their native habitats, shoved in a box with dozens of other reptiles, shipped overseas and put in a quarantine period. And if during any part of this um, process, one animal gets an upper respiratory infection, it's going to spread to all the other animals in the box. These animals are dehydrated. They're not eating during this whole process. So if and when they finally do make it to a wholesaler or to their new owners, I guess, in captivity, there is a good chance that within the first year in captivity, they may pass away from a stress-related disease or illness. The one positive thing to buying a wild-caught animal is if you want to breed an animal in captivity that's not currently produced, you have to start somewhere. You have to buy your initial pair or breeding stock from wild specimens. And that's how all of these animals today are now available to the pet trade. Somebody acquired a pair from the wild and was able to successfully breed them to the point where they were able to offer them as pets. So if you're looking to breed a species of reptile that is hard to find, it's rare in captivity, then wild caught is an option for you. However, if you want to just get a rare type of reptile that nobody breeds and you just want it as a pet, then I would sway against wild caught and instead I would recommend just finding a different species of reptile that is produced in captivity instead. There are a ton of species out there that I would like to keep, but they're hard to find and they're not produced in captivity for various reasons, most of which being that they are hard to keep in captivity in the first place. One example would be the dragon snake. I think these snakes are amazing. They look really, really neat. But there's a reason why you don't see them available in captivity, and that's because they don't thrive well outside of their natural environment. They are strict frog eaters, and people will import them just to have them die about six months later. So until someone can figure out how to successfully raise and breed these animals, I'm just not going to get one. Because it would just be for my own benefit, and it wouldn't be helping that species. I personally feel that there are two justifiable reasons to get a wild-caught animal. One of which would be to buy a pair of them so that you can breed them in captivity to lessen the impact of further wild-caught specimens of that species. And the other reason being for educational purposes. If you want to get a wild-caught animal to teach people about it to help their conservation efforts in their natural habitat, then I think that's a justifiable reason too. But if you want to get a wild caught animal just for you to enjoy from your own home and keep as a pet, that's when it starts to sound a little bit selfish for the reptile keeper because it doesn't help that species in any way. If there's one quote that I want you to leave with, it's that wild caught animals can help sustain captive populations, but they do not make ideal pets. Thanks for watching today's episode and we'll see you next time.